I don't know what it is about <laughs> why Colorado is so polarizing. Either you love them or you hate them. Whatever. Either you love them or you hate them. Uh, I, I happen to be on the side of I, I love everything that's going on. Uh, do I agree with everything? Probably not, but I think Coach Prime is doing an amazing job with the, the team he was handed. Uh, it, it's his team. He can build it however he wants to build it. Because uh, whether they win or lose, they're going to blame him anyway. So they, if you're going to get the blame, hey, bro. Hey, bro, do it your way. So let's check out this first video. Uh, and this is about the kid that I guess... Let's get in the video. Did an interview with former Colorado player Xavier Smith, who said, I was actually getting mad. Like, tears were coming to my eyes because, bro, you never even tried to get to know me. Hold on. Let me he was just... Make sure I got my sound coming through. Oh, yeah, I do. The Athletic did an interview with former Colorado player Xavier Smith, who said, I was actually getting mad, like tears were coming to my eyes because, bro, you never even tried to get to know me. And I saw this initially when it was posted, and I don't personally see anything wrong here uh, because high school, we got we to realize, man, high school and college are two totally different dynamics and you know the politics and and at the college level is absolutely insane um and hey man coaches ain't really trying to get to know you until you to you to you to you a guy that can get on the field uh nothing against uh xavier smith i don't know much about the kid but if a coach didn't feel like you was you know whatever people can you can get mad in the comments and y'all can say kids this kids that but uh these coaches got to put food on the table and um a lot of times once you get to college sometimes those relationships <laughs> get put on the back burner until you are a verified player do i agree with it not 100 percent, but i can kind of see the dynamics that's going on here um i don't know bro i don't know let's keep going he was destroying guys confidence and belief in themselves the way he did it it could have been done with a little more compassion I mean, this is how I see it. At the end of the day, once you become a student athlete at the college level, you you know you 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 kind of put away uh, a lot of those childish things that you know that you got got away with in high school. Uh, and I mainly say that because your confidence is is yours. Like you, only you responsible for what makes you happy. If you if somebody if another man saying something to you uh, makes you lose confidence in yourself. Uh, you didn't have confidence to be begin with. Uh, and college football is a very rigorous and it's a very tough uh, platform to navigate, you know, politically, talent-wise, development. It's, it's a lot that goes into it. Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and my biggest problem with either side is, look, can we, why we can't hash this out, you know, offline? You know, I don't think this, this kid had to go public. But he did, and then Shadur said what he said, and Coach Prime said what he said, and, you know, it's been like a torture storm of Colorado hate and, you know, some justifiable, you know, depending on what side you're on. But me personally, you know, a former or ex-player is going to have some some things to say, and everybody want to chase that Coach Prime clout. Um, so it's interesting. So that's Shador Sanders, Coach Sam Sanders' son, and the Colorado quarterback says, I don't even remember him, to be honest. Bro had to be very mid at best. And this is the tweet right here that I believe started like a, a Twitter storm of like Shador not being the number one pick. And, you know, Coach Prime said, my son going top five, what your son doing? So, you know, the, the Sanders decided to, you know, go more on the offensive over the last two weeks. And I ain't mad at him because, you know, everybody throwing darts and, arrows and bullets at, at the Colorado program for various reasons. Uh, some of it's hate, some of it's not, you know, but there's a lot of darts being thrown that way. So I don't have a problem with, with Coach Prime or Shador or Shiloh or anybody else from that program that, you know, defending themselves. And the way I see it, uh, traditional sports coverage is changing. All right, even in the in mainstream media, they are changing the way they talk about sports. It's no longer about purely debate and who's right and who's wrong. It just, they just, it's different. 
People want to see more authentic coverage. People want to see these real people. They want to see the real stuff. They don't want to see the politically correct things. They want to see the real people. And this is the real person. So with that being said, do you think, do you think that this latest Twitter storm from Shadur or Coach Prime is going to hurt his draft stock in the next uh, the next draft? I say no. Um, why? Because the boy can play. If they can squeeze off a couple more uh, wins in the win column, maybe get to seven, eight wins this year. He getting, he probably, he's probably going to be a Heisman candidate. If they get to eight wins, he will be a Heisman candidate. Uh, you know, and another thing, if Bo Nix went number 12, Bo Nix, who I thought was a third, fourth round pick, if he went number 12, if JJ McCarthy went number 11, wherever they went, uh, wherever them two went, uh, I know for sure that <laughs> Shadour is at least. Uh, of the first the first overall quarterback. If those two dudes win the first round this year, you can't tell me that Shadu ain't at least a first round pick. And you can't you can't tell me that he ain't better than Drake May and you know Bo Nix. J- I take him over Bo Nix, Drake May, and JJ J- J- McCarthy right now. Sure will. Now I like Michael Penix. I like Caleb Williams. I like Jaden Daniels. But uh, over them other guys, you know, you got you you can have a toss up there between you know him, Quinn Ewers. There's gonna be a couple quarterbacks coming out next year. I think Quinn Ewers is gonna be pretty good. Uh, but do you think this is gonna hurt the draft star? I don't think so, but a lot of people seem to think so. Mo, give me your take on this, man. I like this right here, Carl. I'm gonna touch on it for you, real simple. My old man used to tell me, "Apple trees produce apples." You remember back in the season? When Coach Coach Novell got at Prime a little bit about wearing his glasses, having his hat on, and about respect, and alluded to how he was raised. What did Coach tell you? You just made this personal. And I understand exactly what the family is. That's the same way that I raised my kid. Protect the family name first, last, and always. And all Shadow is doing is protecting dad's name. So when you look at it, it's like this. Every time that you get a comment or somebody says something about you, Shador, it's not worth your time because you're elevating them. Like you said, your teammate was mid. There's no reason to say somebody's mid. Just move on from it. Elevate yourself from it. For the end of the day, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get drafted in the NFL. You're going to be doing handshakes with the convention, the chess bump. You might as well be a potential franchise quarterback. And when you're a potential franchise quarterback, there's no reason to get into the lower tier argument. You get into the big tier because what you want to see is big picture. And when you're not seeing picture, all your concentration and everything that you're doing is on something else. So I would always tell people, if at the end of the day, if somebody's saying something that you don't like or you don't agree with and they're not worth your conversation, tell them to get in the goofy line. Tell them to move on. I get it. I like this com- conversation. I like that he's representing his family. But at some point, Carl, you got to leave this one alone and let it be. I mean, I agree with what he said. Uh, that's the the political way to do it. But, hey, man, I'm, I'm telling you, hey, man, talk your stuff, man. We in the, the age of NIL and player marketability, and the more moments you have like that, the, you know, the more marketable you are. Uh, but the thing is, and we've yet to really see it with Shador at this stage of the game, his daddy, Coach Prime, would talk that stuff, and he would bag it up on the field. That's why he got that gold jacket. They don't just get those to anybody. That's why he got that gold jacket. So I'm all for, you know, popping off. Saying what you gotta say, do do that. But hey, man, when August roll around, we, we need to see you see see some see some things. So if you're gonna talk it, bag it up. If you're gonna call somebody me, you better be uh, elite. Uh, and I think Shadur would do that. And if you don't, hey, I'm gonna be right here and say, hey, man, yeah, he 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 did X Y Z. But hey, man, if he had anything any of that Dion in him, that Sanders, that Coach Prime, that Prime Time in him, he gonna talk it. He gonna walk it. He may even do that that Dion sidestep into the end zone. Smoke, I've been back and forth over this. I've got a chance to talk to Coach Prime this week as well. I'm going to be honest with you, in dealing with recruiting the way that I've done in the past, there's no easy way to tell a player that you don't think he's good enough and that it's time to move in from the program. You can interview guys from a number of different schools, whether it be Alabama, whether it be Georgia, whether it be Ohio State, whether it be Notre Dame. Guys that are getting asked to move on because they're not going to play. And when you sit down with a player in that situation, there's no easy way for you to say, hey, we don't have plans for you here. We don't have a future for you here at our university. 
Shador is doing what any person would do in that situation. A lot of guys, when you talk about something, you have to remember that's just not his coach. That's his dad. And he has to get on the internet and watch day after day after day of people attacking his father. And he typically hasn't responded to anybody that does it that's an adult. But he looked at a former player as one of his peers and he stepped in and did what guys do to defend their dads. When I think about what has went on at Colorado and the way that it's been covered and how upset people Hudson, get, what's good, bro. especially when you talk about Shadour, Shiloh, and even Deion Jr. in the presence that he has on social media on, on the internet, you have to know this, Smoke. People in general, they hate rich kids. They hate kids that come from means and that people feel like their parents have positioned them. We went through this last year when we rated Arch Manning number one, and although Arch doesn't do any social media, and you- Ooh, I know he, look, hey, I told y'all, I told y'all when, when all that Arch Manning stuff was going down, I went and broke the tape down back in what, 2022? I said, ain't no way in hell this man the number one quarterback in the 2023 class. And here we are, two years later, two years later, that boy still riding that pine, still sitting behind Queen Ewers. We don't know if he gonna play. I think they gonna end up recruiting uh, the next dude before he, before he even get on the field, they probably end up bringing in somebody else. And I don't think it's uh, a far cry to say that they're going to try to go get Keelan Russell out of Duncanville. And if Keelan Russell come in as a true freshman and compete and beat Arch Manning for that starting job, hey, that's all I got to say. Because y'all hey, already know how I feel about Keelan Russell. Keelan Russell, I always miss the man name. But either way it go, y'all know if he go to Texas, he go to Alabama, I don't think SMU going to get him. I'm sorry. After I watched the test, I said, bro, there's no way. There's no, there's no way. I'm getting way out to There's no way SMU is going get, to get get uh, Keelan Russell to sign. No way. That's just my personal opinion. I, don't, you know, I ain't got nothing to base that off of. But watching his tape and then going through and looking at all the other top 15, 20 quarterbacks. I got to get through the whole list. But going through all those, those top 20 quarterbacks, Keelan Russell was my QB1 when I looked at everybody from that 2025 class. From uh, T- Tevin, Tavian, Tavian to Bryce Underwood, all those boys are good, but I, Keelan Russell, Keelan Russell stood out to me the most. You hardly hear the man is on social media. We were bombarded with hate because everybody said he was number one only because his last name was Manning, and we just saw what he did in the spring game at Texas. Man, got- cut it out. We not we not putting that much stock into a spring game for a dude in his third year. We not doing that. We not do you didn't you didn't make him number one to be the spring game all American quarterback. Y'all didn't do that. Were well, you the number one quarterback in your class, the number one recruit in the in the whole class, you should be on the field by now. So you can't and I and I rock with Carl <laughs> I rock with Coach uh Tough. I rock with Tough because he, he was dropping some gems, but when it comes to Arch Manning and these major recruiting platforms, it's it a lot of stuff don't sit right with me. I'm just gonna be honest. If you the number one overall player in your entire class, it should be a lot more production right now. And you know, and, and, and maybe it speaks to just how talented Quinn Ewers is, but either and I, I, who y'all better hope Quinn does Quinn have another year? Y'all better hope he don't stay another year just to keep Arch Manny on the bench. But um you can't you can't sell me he the number one recruit for, you know, in 2023 and uh he it, off of a off a spring game. What you gonna do on his live bullets when people can actually light your 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 six fold, two hundred fifteen pound self up? And I like Arsenal. He got I think he got the tools to do it. Question the level of competition coming out of high school. He he does have some some athleticism, question the arm strength, question the decision making at times. But overall it was mainly the uh the level of competition for Arch Manning coming to high school. And I said it then, I said Arch Manning's gonna have to sit for at least two, three years before he's even ready to to compete for one of those starting roles at Texas. And here we are, two, three years later. And we just bragging about a spring game, even though we know Quinn Years is going to be the starting quarterback. We know this. Barring any injuries or anything like that. Quinn Years is going to be the starting quarterback. So they can't sell me the Arch Manning thing until you get on the field and then he has to do some Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, Arch, Archie Manning type thing. That's all I'm saying. Show me. I don't care about the spring game. I do care about the spring game, but I don't care about it to, to validate somebody as the number one recruit two years, two and a half years after they signed and they haven't played or started a single game yet as the number one 
overall quarterback, number one overall recruit, and he's a manny. It's a lot. That's, it comes with a lot of expectations, man. I don't care what nobody say. You got to think about all of the hate that anybody who says or even suggests that Bronny James can play in the NBA. Everybody hates it. They hate to deal with it. The people that are at home watching this show right now, they hate somebody that comes from a wealthy family that they feel like has been positioned over them unfairly because they have something that they don't. They feel like they're more talented. They feel like they're better. So just by human nature, that's what he did. Coach Prime did not directly say anything derogatory about the that comes from a wealthy family that they feel like has been positioned over them unfairly because they have something that they don't. They feel like they're more talented. They feel like they're better. So just by human nature, that's what he did. Coach Prime did not directly say anything derogatory about the kid. He did. To that point, though, back on Earth, <laughs> man. Arch Manning was positioned unfairly atop of the 23, 23 class because of that namesake. You can't say that about Shador. Shador would literally, uh, I think he was like a three star coming out of high school, ended up going to Jackson State, uh, being there for like two years. Then he they transferred up to Colorado. He lit the league up or the, the FBS up there. Didn't win many games, but he he's earned his keep. He's earned the right to talk his stuff. Arch Manning has not. He retweet Lord Jesus comparing to what somebody else had tweeted, but he never made a comment directly about the kid. He's been under scrutiny because of the transfer portal. People hate the way that he's running the transfer portal, but I'm going to tell you what, I've seen the team in every phase since he's been there, every move that they have made in the transfer portal, whether it's addition or subtraction, their roster has gotten significantly better. And people think, well, recruits aren't going to want to come there. I can't tell. It seems like they're getting the commitment smoke every day that I look up online. Somebody is committing. And people don't realize how many kids and how many parents call trying to go up there and visit. They made a big deal because they said he wasn't uh, going on in-home visits in people's houses. I don't think people look at that from a realistic standpoint. If you've been anywhere with Prime, and I have, you have to understand that he's not normal. He's not a normal coach. Any if I call, if I took him right now with me anywhere in the country and I put out a tweet and said, Coach Prime is here, and this is where we at, within five minutes, it will be thousands of people surrounding him. Traffic would be stopped up the interstate. He is not just a former NFL player that made it to the Hall of Fame. There's lots of guys that are in the Hall of Fame that can walk through the mall and people don't notice them. He is a cultural phenomenon. He is an icon. No matter where you go, he can walk through the mall. He can't walk through stores. That's just who he is. He has the same kind of cachet as Michael Jordan, as a Beyonce, as a Jay-Z, as, as guys like Prince when they come. So him getting, him going in the neighborhoods and, and going and visiting people's house, you just can't compare it. It's not the same thing. Years ago when Isaiah Thomas... And I say this when it comes to people uh, on Coach Prime head about high school recruiting and him not taking kids. I think by that stigma being out there that Coach Prime is not taking a whole lot of high school kids, I think that drives up the value because he is, they are still signed. They may not sign a lot of high school kids, but that just drives the value up. So if, if I take you or if Coach Prime, Coach Prime takes you as a high schooler, I mean, you you really a guy that he feel like can, that can come in and play. So that's like that's a stamp in and of itself, because we know what Coach Prime trying to do build up those trenches. He brought in Coach Sapp, another gold jacket. He already he got low hope from the Vikings. He coming in working with that offensive line. They done picked up what's the boy name from IMG? Can't think of his name right now. But they got that tackle from IMG. They done picked up. They Philip Haynes. They done picked up a lot of guys. So we'll see how this works. Um, but. I, with that being said, I think by that stigma being out there, I think it drives the price up and, you know, uh, scarcity equals value. So if it's a lot less opportunities there, that means it's going to be a lot more value and emphasis placed on it from kids in the portal and kids in high school and kids from the JUCO level. Was the basketball coach at FIU. I was with him 
an orange mound in Memphis, Tennessee, outside of Memphis Melrose. And as soon as people found out that the great Isaiah Thomas was there, you could have closed the school down. Those guys are in different situations when it comes to recruiting smoke. And so crime is going to get covered. Everything is going to be over exaggerated, but the world didn't end and everybody will be back Monday. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, they'll be fine. Uh, but I really just want to get caught up on that. I saw the video. I said, man, let me see what Cole, Cole Reed talking about.